Hey, hey, hey. What you doing, guys? It's Mrs. Klein. And Mr. Creighton. And we are here today with your podcast for Chapter 15, Lesson 1, entitled History of Scientific Thought. Okay, all right. In this lesson, you guys are going to learn about the history of scientific thought. And like always, we've got some vocabulary words and key terms that you are going to need to be responsible for. They are rationalism, geocentric theory, harmony, anatomy, and dissection. And a reminder, when you hear this sound, it means you just heard a vocabulary word. In addition to that, we have a big idea for the unit, and that is... Revolutionary ideas have a continued impact on societies and government. And we have two essential questions. The first one, do ideas from the past shape the present? Second is, how did the Enlightenment have long-lasting effects on people's ideas about government, economics, and society? All right, starting off, it's classical science. You can follow along in the old history textbook on pages 497 to 498. The question we want you guys to be thinking about, how do classical ideas about astronomy, mathematics, and medicine shape European thought? Between 600 BC and AD 200, Greek scientists used an approach called rationalism. In this approach, in this approach people used reason to expand knowledge, but they did not test their ideas with experiments. The Greek thinker Aristotle lived from 384 to 322 BC. He studied the stars and planets in a rational way. His studies led him to develop the geocentric theory. This placed the Earth at the center of the universe. An astronomer named Ptolemy lived 500 years after Aristotle. Ptolemy also took a geocentric view of the universe. In addition, he claimed that objects such as the moon and stars moved in small orbits of their own. Aristotle's and Ptolemy's view of the universe proved to be wrong. Even so, scientists accepted it for the next 1400 years. A Greek mathematician named Pythagoras lived in the 500s BC. He believed that all things combine in an agreeable way to form the universe. This idea of things combining well with each other to form a whole is known as harmony. About 200 years later, Euclid built on Pythagoras' theories. He studied shapes such as circles and triangles. His work formed the basis of the area of study known as geometry. The Greeks laid the basis of modern medicine. Hippocrates lived in the 400s BC. He believed that doctors could identify diseases by studying many cases. Galen lived in the AD 100s. He focused on anatomy, or the structure of living things. He gained much knowledge of anatomy through dissection, the cutting open of plants and animals to understand their parts. The question you guys should be able to answer right now, how did the advances made by the Greeks affect medical practices? Okay, moving on now to science in the Middle Ages. You can find this info on pages 498 and 499. Be thinking of this. What role did Muslim scholars play in preserving classical scientific knowledge? For centuries after Galen's death, little scientific study took place in Europe. European scholars were more interested in studying religion. Between the mid-700s and mid-1200s, Muslim culture grew. Muslim scholars advanced the learning of classical Greece and other ancient societies. For example, Al-Khwarizmi borrowed the numbering system and zero from Indian scholars. His work resulted in the Arabic numbering system. This system is still used in most of the world today. Classical scientific knowledge spread from the Muslim world to Western Europe. Muslim and Jewish scholars translated classical scientific works from Greek and Arabic into Latin. Christian scholars flocked to Spain to study these works and carried them back to Europe. The Jewish scholar Maimonides lived in the 1100s. He wrote about religion, science, and medicine. The Jewish scholar um, Gersonides lived in the 1300s. He made an instrument that measured the distance between objects in the sky. Using it, he discovered that stars were a huge distance from Earth. Scientific knowledge spread through Europe. As this happened, conflict arose between Christianity and science. Christianity stressed viewing the world through faith, but scientists stressed reason. During the 1200s, Christian scholar Thomas Aquinas tried to combine the two approaches. Reason and faith, he said, both came from God. The question you guys should be able to answer right now, how did the contributions of Muslims, Jews, and Christians advance knowledge during the Middle Ages? Okay, the last section, you guys, is the Renaissance leads to new ideas. You can find this information on pages 500 and 501. Be, be thinking about this question, how did the Renaissance affect science? In the mid-1400s, the Byzantine Empire collapsed. Because of this, many Byzantine scholars fled to Italy. 
They brought with them the knowledge of classical Greek and Roman literature. This literature formed the basis of humanism. At about the same time, the printing press was invented. This invention helped spread humanist ideas across Europe. Soon, soon, European scholars realized that classical thinkers did not always agree. As a result, these scholars began to question classical learning. A revolution in the 15th century, in, excuse me, a revolution in 15th century art also affected scientists. Artists wanted to show their subjects in a realistic way. To do this, they closely studied humans and animals. Some even dissected human corpses. Remember, Leonardo da Vinci did that, you guys. This study led to a more accurate scientific knowledge of human anatomy. During the Renaissance, Europeans looked for new routes to Asia. These voyages increased knowledge of the Earth's shape, size, and weather. Some of this knowledge challenged classical ideas. For example, Aristotle believed that people could not live at the equator. He thought that the temperature in this region was too high to support human life. Explorers found that temperatures there were high, but people could live in the region. The final question you guys should be able to answer, how did humanism influence learning during the Renaissance? Okay, you guys, don't forget these terms you'll be responsible for in a podcast quiz. Again, they're rationalism, geocentric theory, harmony, anatomy, and dissection. All right, guys, drive safe. Bye.